Hey everyone, uh, my name is Maria and I'm here with Julius today. Hi, I'm Julius. Uh, we're just gonna like run through some questions about treatment and recovery and what it's like to be sober and I want to hear from Julius today and I think he has a lot of good things to say about sobriety and life so we're just gonna roll into some questions. Okay. Okay. When did you get sober? Uh, my sobriety date is March 26 of 2014. Was that your first time getting sober? Absolutely not. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, I've been basically trying to get sober since I was like 17 years old. 17? Yeah, 17. Yeah. Uh, what was like before this time, what was the longest amount of sobriety time that you had? I actually was able to go without a drink or a drug for eight years prior to coming to the water ship. Do you think that in those eight years you've spiritually grown as much as you have the past three years? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, you know, looking back at it now, I know that coming to the watershed has been part of my journey. There were still some lessons to learn. Obviously, I wouldn't have picked up a drink after eight years. Uh, so, the life I have now, I, I wouldn't trade it for the life I had then. Do you think that um, you could have stopped this last time without the help of treatment? <laughs> it's funny you should ask that because I was just talking to someone about that. You know, uh, before I came this last time, uh, things had gotten so bad, you know, I was homeless again. And uh, luckily somebody who loved me more than I loved myself at the time found the watershed and, uh, and that's how I ended up here. Um, I couldn't stop. I tried desperately to stop even though all the things I'd known about recovery for years, it just wasn't enough. And uh, luckily the watershed, you know, was able to get me down here and get me in treatment and get me detox. Did you just come to the watershed for detox and then leave or were you under the impression that you would stay long term? Like what? What was your plan when you came down here? To be honest with you, uh, circumstances kind of dictated my plan, you know. Uh, and the time that I had started back using, my family was just so fed up with me that they sent me down here pretty much with a one-way ticket, you know. And uh, they pretty much made it clear that they didn't want me to come back home until I got my life back together. And so, you know, while I was at the watershed, you know, um, I didn't really have a plan as to how long I would be here. I just kind of just went with the flow. And, uh, and three years later, I'm still clean and sober. You know. So when you were continuing on with the program that the watershed offers, what was like your biggest obstacle in um, staying sober in like a large community or a community filled with a lot of young people? Yeah, that that was a tremendous obstacle right there. You know, I was in a community with a lot of younger people, and uh, you know, at, at that time, you know, uh, it seemed like it was um, very uncomfortable for me, but. It was exactly what I needed, and it's, it's funny, that's how things work. Um, when you're trying to get sober, a lot of times you don't realize that you're getting exactly what you need, you know. I'd been going to treatment my whole life, 30-day uh, treatment centers. I'd never went to some, a place like this that had a whole continuum of care, and uh, I was able to stay here long enough to get my life back on track because all I knew how to do when I got here was to follow. I was in such a bad state of mind. I didn't know what to do, so I just followed everybody that was in front of me. And three years later, I'm still doing that, and I also get the opportunity to show some other people the way to go. So, uh, it's just been a miracle because, you know, everything leading up to me coming to the watershed that, that got me here, if you look back on it, it's, it was nothing short of a miracle because I know that, you know, I wasn't supposed to be here in Florida getting sober. Uh, it was God's plan. And, you know, I have a pretty good life today and real friends. And, all of that is a direct result of me getting on that plane and coming to the watershed. Do you think that, um, I was going to ask, do you think that, like, if you, let's say you said that everything was already, like, set in stone, that you were following others who were before you, mm -hmm. do you think that if you would have listened to those thoughts that were like, it's time to go, you have a family, you have all this stuff back at home, you already did your part, it's done and over with, do you think that you would still be where you're at today? I mean, you, of course you never know, but, you know, I do know this, you know, I had been here about three months, and uh, and I was kind of at a crossroads because, you know, I had, you know, one of my kids back home was about to graduate from high school, and so, you know, I knew that in my heart that I wasn't ready to go back to the crime scene, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I had to make a tough choice at that point not to go, and it was one of the toughest, it was absolutely the toughest decision I've ever had to make in the coach, and, uh, 
looking back, I'm glad I made that choice because, you know, now because I did that, I'm still sober and I'm able to have a much better relationship with my son than I would have ever had had I gone home and started back drinking and eating. So, uh, yeah, it was tough, but it worked out. I like that. Um, do you think, I'm like asking a lot of do you think questions, yeah. but I value your opinion. Uh, do you think that you need money, family back, um, a car, a house, a job to get and stay sober? Like, do you think those are necessities? Absolutely not. Uh, and it's funny you should say that because I used to think those things were so important. It was a long time, me being here and being sober, before those things even started coming back in my life. Uh, to be honest with you, it was good I didn't have those things early. You know, it was, I was able to stay focused on myself. Uh, you know, if a person really wants to get sober, you know, it has to be, like, you can't have anything that's a stipulation or feel like you deserve anything that to, that'll keep you sober because, you know, um, let's just be honest, um, we have all had things, you know, and we've all had people in our life, but none of that keeps us sober. And uh, what's most important is that you be willing to change your life, you know, because the life I have now, you know, is not a life of a lot of financial things or a lot of material things, but it's a real life with real people in it. And uh, that's worth more than a car or a bunch of money to me, you know. So. Yeah. So, like, if this, like, let's say this video reaches nobody except for that one drug addict or alcoholic who's, like, alone in their room mm -hmm. on Facebook scrolling and they see it, what message would you like to convey to them as an addict who's in recovery yourself? The, the, the thing I would tell anybody who's just trying to get sober, just slow down and turn off the mind, you know? That, that mind of ours is what, is what has always got us in trouble, you know? If we can just try to stop thinking so much and trust somebody who has already done it, mm -hmm. which is hard, and it's, it's really taking that leap of faith, you know, saying, you know what? I believe that this guy's life was messed up and I believe that his life is better. So why don't I try what he's doing? Because what I've been doing hasn't been working. You know, and that's just, you know, that's just a faith that you're going to have to have in order to get sober. That's been my experience. And, uh, do you think that for like, um, do you think that like for the people who are trying to justify their like demise, mm -hmm. basically like justify their drinking, their using, and they're like really, really low, mm -hmm. how, have you ever been there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you think that that person can like, what do you think needs to happen for that person to get out of that? To like have that moment of like, Whew. Well, you know, I can't really say what, what needs to happen, but I can tell you what happened to me. Okay. You know, uh. You know, a few days before I came to the watershed, you know, uh, like I said, I was homeless and I, and I was basically living in a crack house. And, uh, you know, nobody really wanted anything to do with me, you know. And uh, and I can remember, you know, I had a family member, my aunt, who, you know, had asked me, you know, for my insurance information so that she could help get me some help. And, you know, I gave it to her. And, uh, you know, I had no idea that, you know, God was going to step in. And so basically it was nothing I did, it was God stepping in. And you know, and the next thing I know, the watershed was calling me. I didn't know what the watershed was. Or, or all I know is that they told me that I could come to treatment and I could stay as long as I needed to. That's about all I remember out of the conversation because I was in such a drunken state, you know, most of the time. And, uh, and I don't know why, but you know, whoever it was I talked to on the phone, I believed them, you know, and I, I took that leap of faith and here I am three years later still clean and sober and uh, my life's just better than it ever was before and uh, you know you know as far as like I guess your question you know we never know what it's going to take but you know I just believe that we have to take that leap of faith. That was a good answer. Leap of faith. Um, that's it for today and we just want to let you know that you know, we're doing this because we want to reach out to anybody that's struggling um, or anyone who's in sobriety right now and they're just, they don't know what they're doing or where they're going. We just want you to see this and know that there is hope and um, we're here for you and that's it. So thank you. Thank Thanks. you.